produce one pillar of image building, international engagement and re-engagement. In the 2023 budget, an amount of 8.6 billion has been set aside to support information, publicity, and broadcasting services. This completes the list of the key priority areas for the, for the budget, 2023 national budget, Mr. Speaker said. And now turn to the actual vote allocations for each uh, ministry that will support uh, uh, these pillars or priority areas. Mr. Speaker said, let me now turn to the specific vote allocations. Vote number one, that of the office of the president and cabinet has been set, uh, has been allocated 161.7 billion Zimbabwe dollars. This is to cover overall government supervision. Vote number two, this is to the parliament of Zimbabwe, uh, which has received and were proposing an allocation of 47.8 billion Zimbabwe dollars to cover activities of this august house in their legislative and oversight roles. Vote number three uh, is for the public service, labor, and social welfare ministry, which were proposing an allocation of 91.6 billion Zimbabwe dollars, mainly for social protection programs, such as BIM, drought mitigation, harmonized cash transfers, as well as support towards people living with disability, among other social interventions, of course. Vote number four, uh, goes to Defense and All Veterans uh, Ministry, uh, uh, which is uh, proposing an allocation of 331.1 Zimbabwe dollars for the maintenance of defense and security, as well as to ensure the social and economic well-being of war veterans. Vote number five uh, is for the Minister of Finance and Economic Development. We're proposing an allocation of 259.9 billion Zimbabwe dollars towards formulation of macroeconomic policies and management of public resources. The vote also includes a contingency reserve of 74.7 billion Zimbabwe dollars, as well as funding for parasitals under the ministry, such as Zimra, uh, Zimstat, uh, Printflow, Zipar. Vote number six is for the Office of the Auditor General, for which we are proposing a budget of 9.9 .9 billion Zimbabwe dollars, mainly for audit of accounts, financial systems, and financial management of public entities. I now see that the screens are working. Thank you very much. Vote number seven is to the Minister of Industry and Commerce with an allocation of 15.5 billion Zimbabwe dollars. This is to vote number eight, the Minister of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water, and Rural Development, for which we are proposing an allocation of 362.5 billion Zimbabwe dollars most of which is for programs that ensure food security in the country, such as the agriculture input support uh, under the Agricultural Productive Social Protection Scheme, or from Vudza in Tuasa, for short, uh, the management of strategic grain reserve, water harvesting, and irrigation development. And this is not the full list of the activities of that ministry. Vote number nine, uh, uh, for the Minister of Mines and Mining Development, we're proposing an allocation of 12.9 billion Zimbabwe dollars to cover uh, uh, maintaining money, uh, mining development in the country, including mineral exploration, mineral exploration, and support to artisanal and small-scale miners. Vote number 10 is for the Minister of Environment, Climate Change, Tourism, and Hospitality Industry. Here we're, we're proposing a budget of 14.2 billion. This is to cover development and implementation of environmental and tourism policies and programs, including environmental protection. Vote number 11, uh, the Minister of Transport and Infrastructure Development, with a allo proposed allocation of 144.6 billion Zimbabwe dollars. This is towards the development of transport, and uh, transport-related infrastructure, uh, such as roads, airports, railways, and ports of entry. Me lubricate my throat, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Someone is mentioning whiskey. There is no whiskey. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, on a more serious note, vote number 12 is for, is for the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Trade. We're proposing an allocation of 81. 9 billion Zimbabwe dollars to promote, protect, and safeguard the interests of the country, including 
driving their engagement and re-engagement uh, agenda uh, processes and protecting interests of our nationals abroad. Vote number 13 is aimed at the Minister of Local Government and Public Works and we're proposing an allocation to that ministry of 98.6 billion Zimbabwe dollars mainly towards sound local authorities' governance and provision and maintenance of government infrastructure. Vote number 14 is for the Minister of Health and Child Care, which is uh, we're proposing an allocation of 473.8 billion Zimbabwe dollars. Uh, this is for the provision of health care services to, the, to our citizens. Vote number 15 is for the Minister of Primary and Secondary Education, and here we're proposing an allocation of 631.3 billion Zimbabwe dollars to provide quality infant, uh, uh, junior, and secondary education with the bulk of the allocation going towards payment of salaries for teachers and other learning costs or learning expenses. Vote number 16 uh, is for the Minister of Higher and Tertiary, tertiary Education, Innovation, uh, Science and Technology Development. Uh, we, we are proposing an allocation of 156.5 billion Zimbabwe dollars, mainly for the development of a skilled and competent human capital, including support for universities, teachers' colleges, and polytechnic colleges. Vote number 17 uh, is for the Minister of Women's Affairs, Community, uh, Small and Medium Enterprises, and we're proposing an allocation of 18.5 billion Zimbabwe dollars uh, for women empowerment programs and uh, agenda equality and promotion of small and medium enterprises development. Vote number 18 for the Minister of Home Affairs and Cultural Heritage with an allocation of 293. Yeah, that's 293 billion Zimbabwe dollars, comma doesn't matter, mainly towards maintenance of law and order, registration and, and, and issuance of secure identification documents, as well as uh, a migration management. Vote number 19 is for Minister of Justice, Legal, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs, which for which we are proposing an allocation of 120.3 billion Zimbabwe dollars towards effective delivery of justice, incarceration and rehabilitation of, of offenders. Vote number 20 for the Minister of Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Services with an allocation proposed allocation of 8.6 billion Zimbabwe dollars, mainly for information dissemination to the public and, and for image building purposes. Vote number 21 for the Minister of Youth, Sports, Arts and Recreation, we're proposing an allocation of 21, sorry, of 25.1 billion Zimbabwe dollars uh, towards empowerment, um, uh, uh, employment creation, youth participation in national development programs, as well as recreation activities. Vote number 22 is for the Minister of Energy and Power Development. We're proposing an allocation of 15.5 billion Zimbabwe dollars for the provision of energy supply and the bulk of the allocation target, uh, and the bulk of the, uh, of the allocation targets electricity supply interventions. Vote number 23 uh, is for the Minister of Information, Communication Technology, and Courier Services, for which we're proposing an allocation of 17.4 billions of dollars towards the promotion of, of access and maintenance of national systems and establishment of community information centers. Vote number 24 is for the Minister of National Housing and Social Amenities with an, with an allocation of 27.7 .7 billion Zimbabwe dollars for the provision of affordable and decent housing. To undertake the constitu their constitutional mandate, independent commissions have also been allocated their respective budgets, uh, Mr. Speaker said. So uh, Judicial Services Commission is at 37.9 billion, Public Service Commission 107.5 billion, Council of Chiefs at 4.2 billion, Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission 4.7 billion, National Peace and Reconciliation Commission 3 billion, National Prosecuting Authority 11.3 billion, Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission at 7.4 billion, Zimbabwe Electoral Commission at 101.6 billion uh, Zimbabwe dollars, all these are Zimbabwe dollars, Zimbabwe Gender Commission at 3.5 billion Zimbabwe dollars, uh, Zimbabwe Media Commission at 2.6 Zimbabwe dollars, billion Zimbabwe dollars, and the Zimbabwe Land Commission 
a turn from 0.4 billion Zimbabwe dollars. Mr. Speaker said that completes the vote allocations or proposed vote allocations. I now turn to tax policy measures aimed at supporting uh, 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 revenue mobilization for, to support this, uh, these, these expenditures. Mr. Speaker said the tax policy measures I'm proposing will largely focus on enhancing tax collections to support the transformation agenda through uh, reform of policy and administrative practices. Additional measures seek to support growth and competitiveness of local industry, as well as provide a relief to taxpayers. Let me start with supporting industry. Uh, 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 an issue uh, at hand here is the customs duty on capital equipment imported by specific industries. Mr. Speaker said, you recall that government in 2022 removed customs duty on capital equipment used by the agriculture, energy, manufacturing, mining, and health sectors with a view of reducing the cost of doing business as well as uh, for the simplification of tax administration. Uh, there remains scope to expand the list of such uh, capital equipment uh, in response to representations uh, by the productive sector. They've made strong uh, pushy representations. I therefore propose to remove customs duty on additional capital equipment, including but not limited to uh, qualifying products submitted by the agriculture and uh, energy industries. I now turn to the suspension of duty on milk powder. Mr. Speaker, sir, in order to augment local production and also cognizant of the need to provide the local industry ample time to invest in the necessary infrastructure and dairy head towards self-sufficiency, I propose to gradually reduce uh, the ring-fenced milk powder imports under suspension of duty by an annual quarter of 25% over a period of three years. Let me turn to the issue of suspension of, of duty on basic commodities. Mr. Speaker said, government suspended customs duty on basic commodities in order to cushion consumers from unjustified price increases. These uh, measures uh, have contributed towards uh, stability uh, of basic, uh, prices of basic commodities. Um, uh, therefore, the suspension of duty uh, has worked up to now, but it expired. That is, the statutory instrument expired on the 16th of November 2022 and we don't intend to renew it or extend it. So it has expired. However, government will continue to monitor uh, prices of basic commodities with a view to ensure responsible pricing and affordability, failure of which the suspension of duty will be reinstated. I now turn to some uh, revenue enhancing measures starting with, uh, beginning with uh, uh, the area of the uh, VAT. Mr. Speaker, sir, whereas the static region standard uh, VAT rate or value-added tax rate averages 16%, Zimbabwe's VAT rate is 14.5%, lower than the static average. The VAT rate was reduced from 15% with effect from 1 January 2020. This was to support households and citizens during the peak period of the COVID-19 pandemic. Implementation of strict measures to fight the pandemic complemented by the countrywide vaccination rollout program has enabled government to open up the economy to various activities. I therefore propose to reinstate the VAT rate to the previous level of 15%, and this is with effect, effect from 1 January 2023. The impact on low-income households will be mitigated by existing exemptions and zero rating on basic goods and services. I now turn to the area of income tax allowance deductions. Uh, this pertains to fiscal invoices. In order to further improve tax compliance, 
and widen use of fiscalized devices. I propose to disqualify deductible expenditure that is not supported by a fiscal tax invoice. I now turn to the issue of suspension of duty on capital equipment imported by the tourism operators. In order to enhance the sector's contribution to government revenue, I propose to replace the facility with the suspension of duty on specified capital equipment imported by the tourism uh, sector. Let me turn to some tax relief measure, measures, Mr. Speaker said, starting with the IMTT or the Intermediate, Intermediate Money Transfer Tax on foreign currency transactions in Maine. Mr. Speaker said, in order to promote usage of the local currency, government increased the Intermediate Money Transfer Tax, IMTT, on domestic foreign currency transfers from 2% to 4%. It has therefore been observed that some entities are now preferring to settle transactions in cash instead of electronic transfers or indeed banking uh, their, their US dollars. In order to promote use of the banking system, I propose to align the IMTT on foreign currency transactions to the rate of applicable local currency transactions at 2%. So it's going to fall, drop from 4% to 2%. In addition, government will consider reviewing other measures in order to strength, strengthen the foreign currency system, exchange rate system, including the 20% surrender requirement for domestic foreign currency transactions. I turn to the IMTT uh, uh, exemption for, for certain other uh, transactions. In order to mitigate against higher wheat prices, and consequently the price of bread and other wheat products, I propose to exempt from IMTT the transfer of funds to farmers for the purchase of wheat by, pri by, by private off-takers approved by the Agricultural Marketing Authority, AMA. This is uh, for the period 1 September 2022 to 31 March 2023. I now turn to tax administration measures. Mr. Speaker, sir, in order to mitigate against challenges that mainly emanate from use of physical fiscal devices, it is necessary to adopt virtual solutions that can easily adapt to technological initiatives, thereby complementing the already existing solution. I therefore propose to extend a virtual fiscal solution whereby clients will be linked to Zimra through server connectivity to accounting systems and point of sale solutions. A pilot project using selected uh, compliant clients will be implemented during the second quarter of 2023. Let me turn to other policy measures, uh, a statement just on the payment of mineral royalties. Whereas the country is endowed with rich mineral resources, such resources are finite. It is thus necessary that part of the resources be used to build up fiscal reserves. Although uh, traditionally royalties are remitted in cash, it is pertinent that the current formula be reviewed in line with government policy to preserve value and mitigate against revenue loss. As already enunciated by His Excellency the President, Dr. E. Jim Nangagwa, uh, mining houses will be required to remit royalties partly in the form of a mineral and in cash as follows. 50% 50% in the form of mineral consent and in the prescribed form of purity and, and quality of mineral consent. 10% in foreign currency cash and 40% in local currency. PGA miners currently do not have refining, uh, refining uh, facilities, hence sell semi-processed concentrates for further uh, processing. Mr. Speaker said, Section 302 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe requires that all government revenues, including royalty uh, revenue, shall be deposited into, this, into the Consolidated Revenue Fund. I therefore wish to emphasize that royalties paid in the form of mineral minerals shall continue to be accounted for in line with the Constitution of, of Zimbabwe, but the, the custodian uh, will be the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe for the mineral uh, deposit, mineral royalty uh, portion. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, sir. the journey of economic transformation which began in 2018 requires us to deploy resources 
and effort in areas where the country has comparative advantage. Such a bold move invariably requires hard work, determination, self-belief, and discipline, complemented by a shared vision by all, irrespective of background and beliefs. In conceiving these objectives, the Second Republic created a foundation which, as Mahatma Gandhi once said, the future depends on what you do today. The support of all stakeholders will enable us to achieve the Zimbabwe we want as espoused by Vision 2030. With a little more persistence, a little more effort, and what seemed hopeless failure will turn to gl glorious success. So said uh, Albert Hubert. As we implement this 2023 national budget, we seek everyone's support so that together we can accelerate the economic transformation that is already underway. Mr. Speaker said, I finally commend the 2023 national budget to this august house in compliance with the law, and it is accompanied by the following documents. So it's the 2023 national budget statement, the 2022, um, sorry, the 2023 infrastructure investment plan, the 2023 citizens budget, the estimates of expenditure, otherwise known as the blue book, the finance bill, the appropriation bill, the statement on public debt, and a gender budget statement. I thank you, Jinote and Siabob. Well, there you have it. Welcome back. This, of course, is The Mint continuing here live on Zim Papers TV Network's Facebook page and, of course, on our YouTube channel, ZTN. Well, the minister's just finished his national 2023 budget presentation with the final words, as you hear every year, I commend this budget to the August House. However, what are the good, the bad, and the ugly of this budget? Well, first things first, I have my guests here, and so, gift, we were hoping for a pro-poor, pro-people pro budget. I don't know what to say. What do you, what would you say? There's nothing for the people in the budget uh, except for the health uh, and uh, education sector, but for the workers, I don't see much. Uh, I will talk about the health sector. I, I think this amount which has been allocated is quite significant. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's, um, it's quite a decent number, um, uh, 473.8 billion. Yes, and also education about 600. Mm, education 631 yeah. and 156 yeah. for higher education. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. But, but, but the game does not end there. Right. Remember the, before the previous discussion, we were saying that uh, it, the game matters when the money is allocated on time or mm. disbursed on time. Mm. Very important mm. as we go forward. Mm. But I did not hear... Uh, anything around tax-free bonus threshold? Mm -hmm. There's no raising of the income tax plan. Uh, yeah, yes, I don't hear In that. In fact, VATs are gone up. It's gone up, yeah. Uh, suspension and also on duties on basic the, commodities are now expired and won't be renewed. Exactly. And that was keeping prices down. Exactly. And remember in the previous discussion, we were also talking about um, Minister of Labor, Social Welfare, getting 0.4% yeah, of the budget. And it, and it pretty and, much followed. And, the, and the repetition is also emerged yeah. for this uh, budget. They got emerged. A, Belong. Industry and commerce, yeah, yeah. fifteen billion. 15 billion. But we'll talk about that. Okay, but yeah. let's first talk, let's talk about let's talk about citizens. I think before I get into the numbers, if you don't mind, you know, mm. um, citizens have faced hardships. They've had price increases mm. throughout the last six months of the year. Jeff, yes, they've 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 had exchange rate instability. In fact, I, I could say that economically for citizens, the second half of twenty twenty two has not been friendly, for want of better words. So they were expecting something from this. And, and let's, let's forget about the benefits, of course, on spending on infrastructure, roads, education. We'll talk about those. Just something directly that can, that can impact their pocket. But VAT back up from 145 to 15%. IMTT tax, sure, the, the forex tax is down from, from 4 to 2%, but I'm not really sure that's going to affect the majority of citizens in the country. Um, farmers, that's probably good. They're exempt from the IMTT to farmers, odd armor products. Uh, but the suspension of duties on basic commodities, now that was very helpful when prices were going crazy because you could then go to South Africa, import some of these commodities duty-free, and that made people going. So 
There's nothing in here. I, I can see, I'm frankly, I mean, as I said, let's exclude the, the spending on health and education and so forth. I'm talking about directly. There's nothing in here for, for you and me, is there? Yes, uh, indeed, we're expecting uh, major changes to the tax brackets, uh, the tax-free thresholds. Mm. Of course, they were revised in the mid-term fiscal policy review and supplementary budget. Like the tax-free threshold, they were increased by 100% from 300,000 to 600,000 per annum. Mm. Mm. So given the inflationary pressures in the economy and the crisis, cost of living crisis we are currently facing, uh, it was of paramount importance that uh, the minister have uh, further adjustment to the tax-free thresholds. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also, sorry, please continue. Please continue. Sorry, please yeah. continue. Yeah, I was saying also uh, by increasing VAT from uh, 14 up to 15. 15, it's also uh, putting more pressure, uh, like reducing the mm. disposable incomes mm. for the majority, who are uh, we, as we were discussing earlier that about 49 percent are uh, in extreme poverty. So the the policies that were recently that are recently announced by the minister are not really helping uh, the poor. Okay, you know when I was listening to the minister, uh, okay, remember the, the budget is four point five trillion. We're pretty close. We said four trillion, four and a half trillion. But but as uh, Professor Mugano said in the Mint on DSTV, he said that really it shows the impact of inflation on the budget. When you're going from five hundred million in 2021. 500 billion in 2021 to 900 billion in 2022, up to 1.9 trillion in 2022, now 4.5 trillion in 2023. That clearly shows the impact of inflation on the numbers. Um, but, you know, when I, when I look, when I was listening to the minister, for me it was like I thought this is a consolidating standstill budget. That was in my head. I don't see this as a, as a growth budget. Does that, is that, does that, is that make you really true? It, 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 you are very right, uh, Andy. And the same worries which we had in our previous discussion that uh, the money is consolidated around the previous uh, beneficiaries of the last budget, the office of the present cabinet getting a staggering uh, over $160 billion, the Minister of Finance itself getting over $200 billion. Mm, mm. Remember in the previous discussion we were saying mm. more resources should go to Minister of Industry and Commerce. To productive in to ministries. Productive, yeah. But the Minister of Industry and Commerce only got $15 billion. I'll tell, tell you what, Gift, hold that thought because I'd like to take a short break and we will be joined after the breather by uh, Persistence Guanyani, an economist, who will be joining my other two esteemed guests here. So don't go away. The Mint, of course, will be right back. Welcome back. This is the Mint Special. And of course, today is Budget Day. The National 2023 Budget Presentation has just been given by Zimbabwe's Minister of Finance, Professor Ntuli Ngube, at the magnificent new parliament building in Mount Hebden. And as he said at the end, he commends this budget to the August House. And now we are hopefully trying to analyze this budget to our August viewers here on ZTM Prime. And of course, you're watching ZTM Prime on our Facebook page, that's Zip Papers TV Network, and of course, via our YouTube channel, ZTN. And of course, I'm joined by distinguished guests in studio today. I've got, of course, Professor Gif Mugano, who's well known, he's a well known economist in Zimbabwe. Uh, Jeffrey S. Makiwa is an economist with Zimbabwe National Chamber of Commerce. And late but not least, is Doris Persistent Guanyanya, uh, economist and member of Zimbabwe's Monetary Policy Committee. Welcome, Persistent. Well, I'm glad you could make it. Thank you for having me on the program. Now then, um, let, let's give that. I cut you off in mid-flow, but, but let me, let's go through this, shall we? Okay, basically the minister highlighted the various allocations to various government ministries, and um, it's interesting to note where big allocations were given. You've got 161.7 billion to the Office of the President and Cabinet. You've got 331 billion to defense and war veterans, okay? Ministry of Finance, 260 billion, 259.9, okay? And the other line item, lands and agriculture, 362.5. 
Um, so let's just, before I get down into the health and education systems, right, we're talking about, look, we knew this was going to happen. Yeah. We knew that the allocation was going to go there. Of course, defense is defense. Yeah. And we're also very proud of our men in uniform. And thank you all for your service. So that, that I can understand. And also war veterans, of course. But, but frankly, um, you know, one, we talked about how land and agriculture, 362.5 billion, how we need to start shifting some of that money off the budget and more into private sector development and agriculture. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, obviously, the president and cabinet, I mean, you know, that's overseeing an oversight role that they've taken. Okay, I, I'm not going to comment on that. But it's still a huge chunk. It's almost three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's almost a trillion dollars on, on yeah. four allocations. Correct. So my major worry really at this point uh, is not the Minister of Agriculture. Yes, Minister of Agriculture, we need to move to a point where private sector is in the deep of things of funding agriculture. But when Minister of uh, Finance takes $260 billion, right? And, and, and if you talk to them, if you listen to what they say, they will say it, this is the fund which they can use for emergencies. And they call it, yeah, they said emergency contingency, 74.7 billion. Ex ex exactly. <clears throat> but if you go back to the last four years, they had similar chunks. Just last year, they, <clears throat> at the beginning, they had around 64 billion. When they were supplemented, 127 billion. But they overspend again that contingency. Yet mm. there were no catastrophic, which were happening in the market or in the country. For example, this year there was no cyclone, there was no COVID. But they overspent. So that is where the challenge happens now. And the result you see it when you look at the development in the financial markets and uh, the exchange for foreign exchange markets. Because that's where you see procurement mm. taking place, mm. the money is being abused. I mean, I mean, so well, the value of money a unit yeah. you know, is being housed by the Minister of Finance, but it's being disabled by the same minister when you look at the budget which is coming through. Well, it's almost as if they should ring fences. It's almost like don't touch this and just keep it there because it's supposed to be for a rainy exactly, day. Or exactly, exactly. Um, Persistent, I want to bring you in here. And you know, um, we were saying uh, be before you came in about how I didn't see, the, we didn't see this as a pro people budget. There's nothing in here for the ordinary person. I mean, income tax hasn't moved. Um, the, uh, the exemption, suspension of duties on base commodities has been expired and won't be renewed. Um, the IMT Forex is down from 4 to 2 percent, but I don't think that affects a lot of people. Um, pretty much there's nothing in here. I mean, in terms of direct, direct uh, into people's pockets. But I want to look more at allocations, and this is the one that worries me. It's clear that we need to put a lot of money into social protection, public service, labor, and social welfare, okay? 91.6 billion only and i say only why do i say only i mean think about this you've got uh ministry of finance 259 billion um you've got uh ministry of land 362 billion but the, the the ministry which is really responsible for for overlooking social protection looking after the most vulnerable 91 billion maybe you have a comment to that i mean is, is that enough in terms of what we need to achieve for social protection uh, given the current state of the economy, you are right that there is need for some uh, prioritization of social protection. But uh, the construction of the budget itself would uh, suggest that uh, whilst not benefiting directly from uh, a social protection fund, they would be benefiting also from other allocations in other ministries, uh, such as the Minister of Agriculture, where... Free inputs uh, from Buddha and so forth. Yes, mm. those uh, inputs are provided. Mm. Mm. I think uh, if my memory serves me well, out of the 1.9 uh, million, million uh, hectares mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that uh, we expect to put under irrigation, under agriculture this year, about uh, 447 thereabouts is going to be uh, put under the Fumvuza project. So to that extent, we feel that uh, those that are vulnerable are covered somewhere outside the social protection. Mm. But just a general comment. What we expect given the constraints that we have in terms of the resources currently is not much of the allocations. Though allocations are very important in that 
they show us the direction of prioritization of government. Mm. But to dwell much on allocations is uh, not what I would expect. Um, we no, but in some cases you have to because yeah. this is about yes, building. Yes. Like, let's yeah. take health. Yes, yes. Uh, let's take uh, child uh, child care. Let's talk about education ministries. I mean, these are real issues. These are about funding salaries and funding construction of universities, upkeep of so forth. Th that that's why I'm saying so much mm. on much on on the allocation. Okay, because the budget itself is coming on the backdrop of uh, scarce resources. The the resources are extremely scarce mm. for everyone to be uh, sufficiently catered for. Mm. But you are right to, uh, uh, to, to object that. Uh, in terms of uh, the prioritization, mm. uh, there needs to be some reflection on the budget itself mm. Mm. as to where do we prioritize given the challenges I, we're I, facing. I, want, I actually want to today. put you directly on the spot, I must be honest, because you, of course, are a member of uh, Zimbabwe's or Reserve Bank's Monetary Policy Committee. And one of the things, of course, highlighted in the budget statement was the need to maintain a tight monetary policy, maintain tight liquidity, um, also, obviously, uh, keep interest rates at the levels that they require to, which we spoke about on Tuesday in terms of keeping levels and that flow as the inflation comes down so we can start moving interest rates down. Um, you know, but at the same time, when you look at what's happening in the banking sector, in fact, Professor and me were talking about this earlier, things like the 20% on foreign currency deposits. It doesn't seem to serve a lot of purpose, to be honest. You know, if I put money, US dollars into a bank, immediately it take, gets, it gets taken away. Um, and so well, there are things, I think, that can be done to make it more conducive for people to start banking. I think that's one of the issues, rather than sort of putting, I mean, if I know I've got 100,000 US and I've got to put it in a bank and I know I'm going to get 20% taken away, I know the bank is going to charge me an arm and a leg from bank charges. And that's another thing I would probably think the monetary policy community should look at is bank charges. You know, okay. there must be things that we can do to, to make banking, financial inclusion easier for citizens rather than banks basically making 60 to 80 percent of their profits on non-interest non income. I, I'm sorry, I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, so you, you, you are right to suggest that uh, at an appropriate time certain uh, uh, charges or, or th that would seem now to discourage formal banking would need to be revisited. Mm. Uh, as I say this, I would also want to highlight to you that I think next week, if uh, not next week but one, the Monetary Policy Committee, who is responsible for the issues you are raising, is sitting. Okay. But obviously, we take clue from the budget itself. Yes, exactly. Uh, in my pre-budget analysis, I talked about the 2% IMTT. Yeah that it might have to be reduced to levels around 2%. Yeah, from 4 to 2. On, on that's four, happened on, on the Forex. Yeah, that's happened. So... 2% of course the so state, which the, we knew. Didn't the, 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 the monetary policy yeah. uh, is also alive to yeah. the need to attract foreign currency mm. into mm. the formal system. Mm. And uh, at an appropriate time, Let's wait to see what happens next. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's why I said I put you on the spot. I was hoping I could get a little nugget off you before the meeting, but obviously you're you're too tactful for me. Uh, Jeff, yes, I, I want to talk to you. You're ZNC, Zimbabwe National Chamber of Commerce. I mean, industry and commerce, fifteen point five billion. Um, okay, sure, you benefit from the infrastructure spending on roads, and hopefully, if they start can start putting some money into. Uh, uh, into railway, that would be even better for you. Oh, by the way, we haven't, we haven't even talked about debt. I see nothing there really about any substantial payment towards debt. So put that in your, in your draw to talk about, uh, Professor. Um, industry and commerce, I mean, I, I don't know. Again, it, 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 I don't know. Maybe, 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 let me make a statement and see whether you agree with me or not. It appears industry has been left pretty much on their own. Is that a state true or false? Uh, it's true. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Because uh, if you look at the amount, uh, 15.5 billion, it's only maybe. Salaries, to, Yeah, to cover operational <laughs> costs for the ministry. Yeah. Uh, not for developing those companies that operate under the. Or what you like, talked about, value chain, uh, value chain. Structural strengthening. transformation of value chains, yeah. Uh, if you look at uh, 
uh, companies like the Industrial Development Corporation, mm, they mm. need uh, constant recapitalization. Mm. Uh, so the allocations that go to the ministry will then go towards uh, companies like the Industrial Development Corporation mm. uh, to support uh, the growth of SMEs in the country, which are the ma majority. So that amount uh, alone uh, is okay. really worrisome for, for the... Right. I, I want to talk about uh, gift. Um, I tell you what, before I move on to these other sectors, uh, I think debt is something we need to talk about. Okay, I mean, we have an unsustainable debt. I think uh, uh, your own boss, Chris, uh, Chris Bugaga, put it at between 13.5 billion to 18 billion, depending who you're talking for and what's how you account for it. But let's put it this way, it's a lot of money. And it appears as if there really isn't enough money, uh, as persistence called it, scarce resources, to make a dent in that, really. Well, we are losing particularly the, particularly the, 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 the old debt. We are losing the game on, on debt. Uh, I think four years ago, our debt level was around uh, 10 billion. Uh, in this budget, the minister is uh, highlighting a figure of 14 billion mm. US dollars. But if you look at uh, the IMF uh, Article 4 report, uh, they highlight about 18.7 mm. billion. I think the issue of data transparency is a real challenge. I think we need a clear position because when you look at the IMF uh, Article 4 report, you look at the methodology and who was engaged, you see that uh, Reserve Bank was engaged, Minister of Finance, the Minister himself was engaged. Mm. So you have a sense that uh, there was confirmation of that debt of 18.7 yeah. billion dollars. It was verified. Yeah, but 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 the, we can argue about that. Yeah. But the main main concern now is the growing of the debt. We are failing to 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 to. I mean, debt, look, debt yeah. is not bad. I mean, I think yeah. people forget that every government lives on debt. Yeah, but but, but, but the there's, also, is a, there's a quantum of There's it. also an unexplained debt around the command agriculture. Okay. Yeah, when you listen and you hear, even in the budget, the minister took a note that uh, the, the, the recovery of loans mm. Mm. under the mm. agro yield mm. are quite worrying. Yet the mm. government is a guarantor of the same loans. Yeah. So there is a yeah. debt which we are not being told. Uh, yeah. Somewhere. The yeah. Somewhere. All right. Look, we've only got a few minutes left. About eight minutes left. But so I want to touch on this issue. These issues, gift. Um, I have to tell you about debt, and I'll come through to all of you. Um, look, I have to commend some of the allocations. I mean, I think 473.8 billion health and childcare. Um, Ministry of Health and Childcare, relevant as well. And of course, they are at the forefront of fighting issues such as polio, of course, COVID, monkeypox, anything that comes along. So, and I, and I really truly believe that that ministry is one of the best run ministries in the country. That I can say openly, having worked with them. Obviously, education, you've got primary and secondary, 631.3 billion. Um, unfortunately, a lot of, well, not unfortunately, fortunately, the minister made a statement which I caught. He said, a lot of that's going on salaries. That could be good news for teachers. Correct. So we also need to appreciate the minister. I think it's only fair. Uh, we were making submissions here that uh, it's adequate funding or significant amount of resources must go to health and education. Mm -hmm. And um, he listened. Uh, so mm -hmm. we need to appreciate him for that. Not yeah, and I mean, and yeah. when you combine that with higher and thirty one fifty six, yeah. that's almost eight hundred billion dollars on education. Correct. And Correct. a lot of that's going on salary. So yeah. that's really cool. I mean, I'm sorry to use that word, but yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that's quite good. But now the issue now for me, particularly in the health sector, mm. yeah, it's about a disbursement of the man on time. Again, yeah. Yeah, I think I, we've overemphasized this issue mm. because of its mm. importance. Mm. If you look at our health sectors, they've got serious challenges in terms of availability of consumables. So we would want to see that, that paradigm shift Mm. From yesteryears where uh, the ministry won't be able to even spend that money mm. by the end of the year. We need timely disbursement. I mean, there's some good things here. I mean, the government, the minister's talking about he wanted to keep a 1.5% fiscal deficit for 2023. Uh, remember, fiscal mm. budget deficit. Remember, yeah. you, you have to listen to the words, yeah? yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's important to understand mm. those words. Mm. Fiscal budget deficit yeah. uh, for 1.5%. Mm. Also, current, current account surplus. I think this year, he records it will be estimated about 450 million US. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the diaspora money is, is still coming in. I think 1.4, 1.6 billion. In US is coming through diaspora. Um, but persistence, you know, um, some areas where one, I, I'm not sure, maybe I missed it, but um, okay, transport and infrastructure development, 144.6 billion, 
I understand that, of course. I don't have an issue with that. In fact, I think it's too low, to be frank. I think we need to spend a lot of money on beefing up our transportation system and, and spending more money on, on infrastructure. Um, the issue I have, to be frank with you, and, and I didn't maybe pick it up, was devolution. Did yeah. you pick it up? No. Because de we, devolution is, is the way forward. I mean, that is the policy. In fact, yeah. it's constitutional. Mm -hmm. Yet I didn't really get any... Yeah, but I didn't really get the sense of the yeah. number in here. Mm. I don't know. Maybe I missed it. Yeah. Hopefully no, no, I missed no, it. it. You said 5%, we, eh? We, we missed it. Uh, we don't hear right about it. it. Yeah. But uh, it's also fair to say that uh, previously they used to allocate 45 instead of 5%, which is the constitutional requirement. Right. But there are also indications uh, that uh, this year is a man, the resources were not dispersed because... Mm. The of uh, it wasn't dispersed, yeah. So th that's again like a challenge. Up to now, I yeah. believe only 30 percent or so has been dispersed. That's a challenge, and even it? then, it was being dispersed for specific projects like mm. water. Correct. In fact, the ministry would allocate mm. the funding to the authorities and then say, You must spend it, you must spend it on that. Mm. So it wasn't really a true devolution, which is what we need to get to. Correct. But, since I let, let me come to you, I mean, there was a whole list of um. Home Affairs, of course, the police, 293 billion. Again, we always salute our, our men and women in uniform, whether you're army or whatever security services. Thank you very much for your service. Uh, you've got justice, 120.3 million. Okay, um, yeah, I can appreciate that. The courts and obviously a lot of that's going on salaries. Information, 73. Um, but but I, I want to look at the commissions. And, and this, this sort of, you know, okay. We talk about being serious about fighting corruption. Okay? In fact, that is one of the planks and pillars of the Second yeah. Republic. Zach, 7.4 billion. That's how much they were allocated. Now, yeah. I'm not sure that's enough resources to fight the kind of corruption that, that we know or we allegedly know exists. Persistence? Yeah, you could be right. Uh, deliberate, uh, um, deliberately, I think, and consciously, we need to allocate more resources mm. towards that function, which I think is the urgent need of day, as mm. you indicated. Mm. Um, suffice to mention that if uh, we fight corruption uh, diligently, uh, all the ills that we're facing, most of them... Can you imagine how much money we can make yes. if we fought corruption effectively? Mm. They would wipe out the cost of the budget. <laughs> yes. They will naturally fall in place. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but um, that's, well, how yeah, it that's is. what we have. Yeah. I mean, look, okay, Zek, we talked about the uh, impact of the election on the budget, the 101.6 billion from Zek. That seems like a reasonable amount, to be frank, to hold a harmonized yes. budget uh, elections, doesn't yes. it? I mean, yes. it's not bad. Yes, yes. Uh, I was expecting a higher number, but that's okay. Yeah, but remembering, we also received uh, some assistance from EU recently. Mm. Mm. And um, maybe just to, to remark on the issue of election. Mm, mm. There's been fear, as it has always been, that uh, pending an election or towards an election or in an election year, uh, the situation is likely to spin out of control mm, mm. because of um, the overspending, overspending of yeah. government yeah. that is expected. Um, and uh, I think it is very important to also comment on that mm, mm, um, mm. with the value for money processes that are going in government uh, no matter how much is going to be spent i think the principle of right price should always be it doesn't matter what it is yeah if right. it is anything that we yeah. are spending Election as long as we are spending at the right price mm. so right. that concept remains mm. very important mm. for government to mm. observe yeah. and uh, for I the agree. ministry to monitor Indeed. observance. Well, unfortunately, on that note, we have come to the end of our main special. And of course, today, as you know, was Budget Day. The Minister of Finance, Professor Tuling Mube, at the magnificent new parliament in Mount Hamden, presented his 2023 national budget. Uh, I'm not sure if it was pro-people. I'm not sure if it was pro-poor. I'm not sure if it was pro-women or even pro-persons with disabilities. I believe, and I think my guests may concur, at least maybe two of, out of three, I don't know, may concur that it could have been a, a, a treading water budget, a, a, a sort of consolidation budget. Maybe that's the right word for it, uh, gentlemen. I think this is what we're looking at here. We're not looking at anything exciting. He, did, he didn't do anything out of the ordinary. He allocated where he thought he should allocate. 
Uh, it didn't put in any place new radical policies that will make anyone's life better. So it's, it's a trading water budget, I think. A budget that maybe consolidates the economic gains made so far. That would, I think that would be a true statement. Yes. So, Andy, uh, in terms of the expectations, I think most of the things that I expected came out. Mm. Mm. And uh, the question about whether pro poor or not, I think uh, it locates its answer in the allocations that went to social. Mm. Uh, Which unfortunately was a bit low, but also education and health. And yeah, health and okay. education. That unfortunately, I, I, have to, I have to but jump the, in there. The issue yeah. of but really culture. The issue of agriculture. I wanted to make a comment. I've I've not I've not seen, uh, I've I've not consciously looked at what exactly happened on agriculture, given the situation that mm. confronts us in the progress on the ground. Look, I, I must be honest. Three sixty two point five billion with the amount of projects and things that agriculture, lands, water, and fisheries are doing. It is. I must be honest. They're doing a lot. Um, you know, if you're looking yeah. from the input scheme, the fertilizer no. scheme, the horticulture programs, uh, there's a lot that they're doing. So even that money, I think, may not be enough for agriculture. But uh, unfortunately, I, I, ha I have, we have to wrap it up. Uh, but, but don't forget, we're here tomorrow. So we're going to continue this discussion, of course, Friday. Don't forget to join us on the Mint, 2.05 p.m. Central African time. I'm going to get exactly the same guests because you can see there's still more they need to say about the budget. So we will continue the discussion tomorrow, Friday, here on ZTM Prime. I'd like to thank my guests, however, Professor Gif Mugano, Jeffy S. Makiwa, and, of course, Persistence Guanyanya. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for taking us through this very, very important day. Well, that's it for the Mint special this afternoon in terms of analyzing the budget. We will be back, as I said, tomorrow, 2.05 p.m. Central African time to do more analysis with exactly my same panel sitting right here so we can get more deeply into it. I'm also going to see if I can bring in women's representative, persons with disabilities, youth, just so we can get their perspective on what they thought was in the budget. If it wasn't, if it was, it would be interesting to know. Anyway, you have a great afternoon, and I will see you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., of course, for the only show that you should wake up to, and that, of course, is Morning Rush, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. every weekday. You take care. I'm Andy Hodges. Goodbye, and please, you all be safe.